Hello friends. Today I'm going to show you how to create an ASP.NET MVC application using .NET 9 core. Okay, so this tutorial is for beginners. So I'll be creating uh, a basic application uh, just to demonstrate, right, what you can do with Visual Studio 2022 when it comes to ASP.NET. And also I'll explain a little bit about the solution and the project structure and uh, what are like models, what are views, what are controllers, right? We'll go through those things in this tutorial. So um, yeah, I mean, if you want to, uh, if you're new to this area, you know, this tutorial, tutorial will be helpful for you. So let's start. So if you don't have Visual Studio 2022, you need to download it. And uh, once you download it, it will be you have to open Visual Studio 2022. I have a video on this. You can refer to that video if you want to uh, know how to download and install it in your system. And after that, you can open Visual Studio 2022. A screen like this will appear. So what you need to do is to do here is that uh, click on this create a new project. But here you can see a number of options. Basically, these are different templates which are available uh, so that it will make uh, it easy for you to start a new project. Uh, what you need to do is uh, select uh, here. Uh, yeah, for that, you can select here C sharp, right? You have different languages. So I am going to uh, use C sharp uh, for this tutorial. So you can select, uh, select that and then here search for ASP.NET. Right. So you will have different templates for ASP.NET. What we need to do is uh, find the this one model view controller. OK, so once you have this, select this and then click on next button. So here give a name for your uh, project. Uh, for example, in my case, I'll say my first MVC. Right. Uh, I'm assuming you are new here. So this is the kind of name you will give or anything that you that uh, you feel right. And then um, my location is this D demo. You can anyway, it will default to your uh, C drive, some you know, repos folder in your local, but you can again change it here. So solution name will also be same as the project name. And then click on next button. Here you can see different framework versions, right? I have 8.0 and 9.0. 9.0 is the latest one. So I am going to go with 9.0 here. You can leave rest of the things as it is and then click on create button so now you will see this kind of structure in your solution explorer so this is the solution explorer okay uh, on the right side and uh, you have these different folders right so you can see program.cs and other things here so let's start with the program.cs right so program.cs is basically the entry point for your application Okay, you can see a few lines of code here. Let's go through this and understand uh, what are these things, right? So when, uh, so entry point is when, you know, before the application even is, uh, before the application runs, right? So there are certain things which needs to be configured or set. Okay, so that is where this code is executed and it does all those things. And finally, you can see there's app.run, which means the application will run after this code is executed, uh, which means now it can accept any requests okay so you can send a request like uh, you want to view something and then the application will provide a response response so uh, here the first line is basically you are creating a builder object here so this is like uh, if you want to set certain things so this object will be useful and this is the starting point of this uh, entire process so you need to create a builder object where again you have to tell in the next line that add controllers with views, which means we are using a MVC pattern here. So you need to uh, use this method, right? Uh, so that it knows that, okay, it is a, 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 we have to follow the MVC pattern here. And then using the builder object, then you have to build and create an application. So basically at this stage, the app, app is in, uh, instantiated, right? So the application is instantiated. So that object is created, okay? The application object is now created. Here, uh, there's a line of code which checks if the environment is not development, right? Then use exception handler as this. So it will go to this particular error view and it will use and display the information in that view. And then here you have something called a strict transport security header. So you have to use this. This is only for like non uh, for production environment. For non production, it is not needed. So that is why it is inside this line of code. 
then you have HTTPS redirection, which is which means uh, even if somebody is requesting using HTTP, it will be redirected to HTTPS, which is a more secured uh, protocol. And then you are saying use routing, which is the ASP.NET MVC routing, so that the URLs whatever is uh, uh, follows a particular pattern, and then it is routed to the right resource. Then you have to use uh, this authorization, which is like uh, Authorization is to authorize the requests so that we ensure that all the requests are valid, right? So the user should not be able to see a resource which they are not supposed to see. So those authorization attributes we can use in different places. Uh, and also .NET has a default uh, way of authorizing it so that uh, users don't get access to unnecessary things, right? Which will expose the security of the application. Then map static assets is again another thing where uh, you are telling that the users using the URL can access your static static assets like your JavaScript files, your uh, CSS files, uh, or uh, you know your images. So those things they can directly access through their URL. So uh, and those images can be displayed on their browser. Okay. Then the next step here is map controller route, which means by default we are saying that okay this is the pattern which needs to be followed which is like first it is the controller and then the action and then any parameters okay and the default is always home and index but this is the pattern which needs to be followed any any request which uh, which is sent to this application need to follow this pattern and then this application will be understand will, will be able to understand that and then will redirect the request to the right resource which is the right controller action method so and after that the application is run okay now the application is running right after all these lines of code is executed the next step is what will happen next right so application is running means somebody has sent a request right due to which the application is now running when they have sent the request it will follow a pattern uh, like uh, when i will run it it will be the the base url will be localhost right so it will be like https localhost a port number slash and then the controller name right so you can see here controller models and views and uh, now let's see what exactly are these right so you can see by default it has created a home controller so and you can see some lines of code here so basically a controller is a, a .NET class right so everything is a class here so it controller is a, a .NET class and it has some uh, like methods these methods are called as action methods Okay, you can see this kind of methods. It has a return type also. So these methods are called as action methods. And here you can see the constructor. Now, what does a controller do? So controller basically is like a traffic cop, right? The request always in MVC, the request will be um, uh, will be redirected to a home controller by default, or you can mention any other controller if you want something else to be default. You can mention that here. We have mentioned home here so uh, basically dot net that's the default uh, for dot net so they have mentioned home as the default here you can you can create another controller and say okay some abc controller should be default so and you have to mention that abc controller name here and that will become the default okay so whenever somebody requests uh, uh, like sends a request to this application right so the uh, first the controller is home controller so it will so it will check what is the action method right so here you are seeing the action method is mentioned as index, which means the request will be served by this action method. Now, as I said, controller is like a traffic cop. What it will do is it will check, okay, what, where the request is going. Okay, this is the request. Now, what it will do is that it will check if there is any data involved in this, which means do, does it need to instantiate any models or get any data from the models? If it is, then it will search or look for that particular model class and create an instance of that class and then pass the model to the view. Okay, basically the model is then passed to the view. So uh, view is like a UI. Okay, that is the that is the thing which is which gets displayed on the browser, right? Whenever someone requests a URL, you will get in response a UI user interface which may have some buttons, some text boxes, right? So that is basically a view. Uh, which uh, is uh, rendered in the browser, right? But what view to be rendered, that decision is taken by the controller. So basically the controller is the decision, uh, uh, it takes the decision and then it will 
either it can render the view as it is like you can see by default they are not using models here but in the template it is just returning the uh, home view okay but um, usually what will happen is you'll get some data from the uh, back end or from downstream applications for example there could be api call or there could be some uh, let's say some database calls from where you will get data right so for example here let's say get data from database right and then what you will do is you will create a model here uh, which will uh, which can store the data for example you are getting a name and address from database okay now how to pass this name and address to the view so you have to create a model class here with two properties called as name and address right and then instantiate that and 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 add that data to that model right once the model is the data is added to the model you can then pass that model to the view and then the view will render that okay so uh, so which means the view will show the data to the users so uh, this is a process called as binding through which it happens and uh, so you can automatically bind a model to a view and uh, then automatically that data will be rendered and shown in the view okay so that's where this uh, mvc pattern is right this is all about like mvc pattern okay so model view controller so these are the three main entities here so model view controller and uh, whatever i explained is a basic thing but yeah as you learn more and more you can uh, you can play around and uh, start doing more complex things now uh, let's go to the view and see what exactly is that so you can see there is a home folder in the view so every controller will have a corresponding folder name here okay which is like here we have home controller so it will have a home folder here and then inside that you have a you have different uh, views based on the action methods so you have here index and privacy two action methods and here also you have two uh, views okay so if you go to one of these uh, then you can see that uh, there is some html code added and then there is something like this which is to execute any kind of server side things if you want to execute here then you can execute it within within this uh, this at red symbol and this braces right so it will understand that it is it has come from the server and it will execute it accordingly but whatever is in html it will be executed on the uh, user's browser okay uh, but user will not understand these things the browser will not understand these things so this data needs to be sent by the server right and then it will be rendered in the user's browser so that is why to do that this kind of uh, uh, syntax needs to be used so this is the view and now model as i said it is like a normal dotnet class okay called as like uh, like view model and then you can add some properties to it by default it is it has an error view model you can create some um, like uh, uh, any you know like a data view model or something which will contain your data or student view model which will contain some student student information name address school college like this okay so that is that is where you can create the models and then you have some other uh, things here like uh, i said about uh, the static resources now all the static resources uh, are inside this ww root right so css uh, javascript files uh, other things images everything is inside this uh, you have these properties which basically defines your like in my case like local host right so local host uh, server that that should be used when i run this application and it is the development environment right so this is uh, what uh, so you have seen this code here right which says that if not is development right so this is how this application will know that is development environment or not right because we have specified here it is development so it means it is a development environment then you have your uh, app settings where you can you know add this kind of settings logging levels or you can add your connection string Mm, you know those kind of static information you can add to your uh, app settings uh, and then whatever uh, packages or any like uh, you know uh, this these things will be added here uh, so if you want some libraries to be used here so those things will be added under the dependencies now this is all about uh, your uh, this application the solution structure now let's create uh, some simple uh, you know uh, uh, things here which and show that how it works so before that let's uh, let's run it and see what exactly happens here the home controller has redirected your request to this uh, particular home page which is your uh, which is your index.chtml right so this is the code and that is the, that is that is what is getting rendered here right uh, now let's make some changes and see 
uh, what happens right when we make these changes what happens so let's go to home controller and here uh, let's create uh, this view data okay and uh, you can see here like uh, a key i have added a key here called as message and then hello world right so the most popular message for the beginners now view data message let me copy it go here and here what i will do is instead of this thing here i will say this okay so now since i have added this at symbol it means this needs to be executed uh, at the server side and then the response needs to be returned to the browser so and in the server side which is the code on the dot net which will get executed on the server so here i am saying set the property to hello world and here you are retrieving that data okay so hello world should be displayed so let's save it and then run it again as you can see hello world is now displayed here right so that is how you you know make changes in the controller and then whatever changes you are making you can also display uh, those kind of things on the view using the view data object so hope uh, this uh, has helped you to understand about this asp.net mvc and uh, you know visual studio and how to create a simple application uh, if you are interested in any you know uh, deeper topics on this uh, let me know in the comment section then i can think about uh, something else for you if you want to learn more just let me know and please like this video and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you can get notifications about my future videos thanks a lot for watching